This is the Norda 001, a trail runner that looks sick, but is oh so expensive. You already know that though. And so after over 700 kilometers in this shoe, I'm gonna tell you the things I like, the one thing I don't like, and why I never should have bought this shoe in the first place. So I picked up this shoe when I was in Europe, training for UTMB. Uh, it cost me 225 pounds. That's like over 400 Australian dollars. But I did go on to do the majority of my European UTMB training block in this shoe, as well as the lap around Mont Blanc itself. I've just ticked over 700 kilometers in this pair. And so I've had some time to think about whether I like it. And the bottom line is, I don't. I love it. <laughs> Let me explain. So the stats on these bad boys look like this. It's a Dyneema upper, which is a fabric that is both light and very strong. It's a fully gusseted tongue, and that upper sits on top of a midsole and outsole that are both made by Vibram. 26 mils in the heel, 21 in the forefoot, leaving us with a five mil drop. Comes in at just over 270 grams. And all of this is put together with a high degree of emphasis placed on sustainability, which is one of the things that drew me to this company in the first place. So as recommended by Norda, I went up half a size. I'm usually in a US 9, these are a 9.5, and, and the length is spot on. There's a little bit of extra width in the toe box compared to what I'm used to, and, and it's nice. But that is made to feel secure by the lockdown I experience in the midfoot. There is no bunching, no extra fabric, my foot feels secure. Initially, I was experiencing a little bit of heel slip, which was worrying, but I soon fixed that by dialing in the lacing with a heel lock. Now, I know a few people have raised complaints about the lack of heel counter, but to be honest, I don't miss it. There are two ever so minimal extra strips of padding in the heel, but the upper is minimal. Understand that there's no extra fabric, absolutely nowhere do I feel like I'm missing something. And so for me, this has to be one of, if not the best fitting shoe I've ever put on my foot. So moving down to the midsole, you already know the stats. You wanna know what I think. The bottom line is, it's so good. Now, not even my close friend and running shoe aficionado, Mitch, can tell me exactly the foam compound that this sole is made of. But the honest truth is, that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is how it feels. Now, straight out of the box, the, the midsole, it feels a little firm. Not concerningly so, but definitely on the firmer end of things. However, Somewhere around the 200 kilometer mark, something magical happens in this midsole. It softens up ever so slightly, just to make those long runs a little less harsh on your feet. Now, in no way is this flattening out or compressing or sacrificing any of the responsiveness that you feel straight out of the box. I can't explain it. it it ends up striking the perfect balance of long run, all day comfort and fast, nimble, agile responsiveness. Now, I've already covered the 26, 21 mil stack height of this shoe, but this, this needs pointing out. The side profile of this shoe looks far more maximally cushioned than what it actually is. Now the way they've designed it is such that the whole perimeter of this midsole actually wraps up a little bit around your foot. It leaves things feeling delightfully secure and an incredibly stable platform to run on. Again, I don't know what specific chemical compound this thing is made of, but whatever it is, 
I like it. <laughs> and when it comes to the outsole, it should be no surprise that Vibram are just doing their thing. <laughs> Light base is class leading for a reason. This lug pattern works and that's all you need to know. <laughs> and so those three elements, the upper, the midsole and the outsole combined to make this shoe so fun to run in. My favorite thing has to be this shoe's versatility. Now I ran the entirety, nearly 30 hours of UTMB in this shoe. No blisters, no foot pain, no worries. Safe to say this shoe can go long. I've also run plenty of trail intervals in this shoe. Fast, technical, uphill, downhill, you name it, this shoe laps it up. I'm usually the guy that loves having a specific shoe for a specific type of run. Carbon plates, deep lugs, maximal cushion, nimble and responsive. This shoe has eliminated all of those. Every single trail run for the past three months have been in this shoe. And durability. This is, this is one of the things that drew me to Norda in the first place. Now it necessarily takes a bit of time to, to give a shoe a good durability test. And initially, initially I was pretty dejected. You see, after just one week of running in these shoes, the outsole started to come away from the midsole. Just a, just a tiny little bit that I chanced upon when I was cleaning my shoes. So I sent Norda an email. And despite buying these shoes through a third party retailer, Norda straight away sent me out a brand new pair. But I wanted to see if these shoes would last. So I kept running in them. And I'm happy to report that even though the glue is failing, just the tiniest bit between the outsole and the midsole, it hasn't continued to worsen. And so I guess now after putting so much time into one pair of shoes, I should come to expect it to start breaking down just a little bit. The outsole still has plenty of grip left in it. The midsole is feeling better than ever and the upper, it's holding up. Just this past week, I kicked a stick while I was out on a long run and it's punctured through the upper. It's a tiny hole and is presenting no issues right now. I'll be interested to see whether that worsens and renders the shoe unusable, but for now, I'm impressed. So to stand here holding a shoe that I've run nearly 500 miles in and it's still to be showing signs of life, good job, Norda. Now I know what you're thinking. This has been an overwhelmingly positive review, and I mean it. I love this shoe. But at the start, I said I'd tell you why I probably shouldn't have bought this shoe, and that's, that's simply because I couldn't really afford it at the time. <laughs> Sarah and I were both in Europe for nearly two months with no annual leave. That was really hard financially for us to pull that off and to throw a $400 shoe purchase in the mix was probably irresponsible. Should have I done that? Probably not. Would I do it again? <laughs> Absolutely. I love this shoe. Norda, I'm a fanboy. I like this shoe. Oh. Oh no, that's my bad. That's my bad. Yeah, so on the finish line of UTMB, I def definitely got peer pressured into doing a shoey and it, 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 it has never been the same. Uh, it stinks. <laughs> oh man.